Good morning, VCC. It's so good to be with you again. Uh, I trust that you are doing well. On Wednesday, we had a great first prayer meeting online, and uh, we're going to be continuing this coming Wednesday with another VCC Connects uh, program. And, and so if you'd like to be part of that, make sure you're checking your emails. We're sending out a, a Zoom code to everybody uh, during the week so that you can join with us. And, and uh, we're just going to continue doing this for the summer. Uh, it's just great to be together. At the end of this morning, we're also going to be taking communion together. So if you need to pause this video, whether you do it now or later, just before, uh, but get yourself a piece of bread and a little glass of juice or something that we can share communion together. Today, I want to talk to you about prayer. And it really comes out of a, a question uh, that I felt on my heart this week. And it's simply this, do we pray properly? Do we pray properly? And this question actually comes out of the feeling that I, I had this week that I, I, I don't ask God for enough. Maybe it's the Canadian in me or just the way I was brought up, but I felt challenged to ask God for more and to be more specific in what I ask him for. And, and uh, even while my personality was uh, challenging this idea, I, I just turned to scripture and I started seeing that Jesus uh, went off to the mountain to pray, often all night long. He was driven into the wilderness to pray uh, by the Spirit, it says, right after he was baptized. And even on, on the night uh, his final night with his disciples, they, they left the upper room so he could go to Gethsemane and, and pray. And I, I started seeing just how important prayer was to Jesus. And then I, of course, turned the question back on myself. And does prayer play as active a role in my life as his? And sadly, right now, the answer is no. And, and so I feel challenged to, to grow in that area. And, uh, I'm just going to take you along with me on that journey. My question, uh, do we pray properly, made me want to research, well, well, what is prayer? Uh, where does this idea come from? I mean, why was it so essential for Jesus to pray, the Son of God? Uh, even the fact that, you know, it says that when his disciples saw him pray, uh, when he was finished, they took him aside and said, hey, can you teach us how to pray? What did they see him doing? Obviously, he was doing more than, Lord, thank you for this day. Bless this food. Uh, thank you for the, the goodness of who you are. I mean, I'm not making light of praying in, in those ways, but like for them to say, hey, we need you to teach us how to pray. Uh, they saw something. They saw him doing something that uh, needed instruction and needed to be taught that you couldn't just easily copy. And so uh, I, I wanted to understand that a little bit more, and I'm going to share with uh, you today some of those ideas. And now I feel comforted that in Romans 8, Paul said, listen, we don't always know how to pray, and so we need the Spirit to, to lead us in how to pray. And so this is a, a complicated thing, but an, an, an essential part of, of, of any Christian's life. And so we, we need to learn how to uh, pray properly. So what is prayer? What does it actually mean to pray? I've heard some people say prayer is an attitude. Uh, I may have even said it at times. This is actually a, a, a cop-out. This is a, a cheap answer. Uh, prayer is a verb. It is an act. And so I can't claim to be praying if I'm not actually doing it. Prayer is, is, is definitely a, a, an act that needs to be done. The psalmist says in Psalm 55 that he prays in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Paul told the Thessalonians to pray without ceasing. And so this is an act that needs to be done deliberately and on purpose. And so uh, that's something we should take into consideration when answering the question, do we pray properly. It's also the act of asking. And so we can thank God, we can worship God, but
But the idea in the word in the scripture is to ask. And, and so that is sort of why I felt challenged uh, about this subject this week and, and felt God saying, listen, I want you to ask more of me. Praying to God is asking. And the word is all through the Bible, like hundreds of times it appears in the Bible. And it always means to ask. And it means to ask with a submission. It's a submissive request. It's an entreaty. And it might surprise you to learn that it's a verb that's uh, not just used between people and God. It's also used between people and other people. When Abraham and Sarah were journey, journeying, sorry, journeying to Egypt, Abraham says, I pray thee, Sarah, tell them that you're my sister. And so we see this idea of asking in submission, asking, uh, recognizing that the power to do is totally in the hands of the other person. When Jacob, uh, uh, sorry, when Esau comes in from the field, just famished, and he sees Jacob stew, Esau says, I pray thee, give me some of that stew. And so we see again this act of, of a submissive request. Even Lot, when the men of Sodom and Gomorrah come to his door and, and he does the unthinkable, he offers them his daughters. He says, I pray thee. And so this word is, is, is just such an interesting action. It's really to ask, but it's to ask with complete submission. And so now when Jesus retreats to pray, he's demonstrating, he's modeling the proper heart. And you know, at the time of Jesus, as we spoke about the Pharisees last week, um, at the time of Jesus, the Pharisees would pray publicly. And so perhaps the model of prayer that was demonstrated to society was sort of this uh, lofty, wordy, uh, really hollow activity of prayer. And, and I believe that perhaps the disciples just saw how earnest, how honest and, and broken Jesus was in his prayers. I mean, in, in the garden, it says he, in his suffering, he prayed even more earnestly. And I believe it's that that the disciples saw in him. And they said, teach us that. Teach us how to do that. And you know, he, the Bible says that he took them aside and he says, pray in this way. He says, our Father who art in heaven. And isn't it funny how we as, as a church, as a people, often when we quote the Lord's Prayer, we, we turn into monks, we turn into singing monks, and we're like, oh, Father, who art in heaven. Like, why do we do that? I believe that if we could hear that prayer, we would hear a, just a brokenness in Jesus saying, our Father, who's in heaven, hallowed, just honored, admired, respected, revered, be your name. Let, let me not walk around with my name, but let me do this in your name. Let your name be revered. You're so awesome, Father. Like, like, ah, oh, I just, I lack that so often in my prayer. So often my prayers are routine. So often my, my prayers are rehearsed and, and I'm probably sounding just like the Pharisees of the day. We need to learn how to pray the way that Jesus prayed. We need to learn how to, to rend our hearts and, and pray with that submission and so the question perhaps would be, well, then why? Why should we pray in that way? And there's this beautiful promise in Jeremiah 29 that I'd like to share with you. And it says in verses 12 and going into 13, it says, When you call out to me and come to me in prayer, I will hear your prayers. When you seek me in prayer and worship, you will find me available to you. If you seek me with all of your heart and soul, I will make myself available to you, says the Lord. Then I will reverse your plight and will regather you from the nations and all the places where I've exiled you, says the Lord. I will bring you back to the place from which I exiled you. This passage is right after the, that famous verse that's on every coffee cup and bumper sticker around. I know the plans that I have for you, a plan to prosper you. We love that verse, but we forget the context and we often don't read these verses right afterwards. The context is that the people were in captivity. 
They were in exile. They had been forcibly removed from their homes in Babylon. And here's the prophet Jeremiah speaking God's word, saying, Hey, I know my plans for you. I know the future I have for you. I know the way that I want to prosper you. Even if right now you're in bondage, even if right now you're in captivity, this is my year of freedom for you. This is my plan of freedom for you. Now, if you will pray. If you will pray, if you will seek me with all of your heart, then I will be found by you. I will draw near to you. Like prayer is attractive to God. Like it attracts God. Like I imagine, I mean, forgive me if I'm being dramatic, but I imagine God up on his throne and they're, you know, they're just rejoicing. They're just having a great time. And all of a sudden that, that echo of prayer comes through the halls of, of heaven. And, and he's just like, everybody quiet. Somebody's praying. Maybe I'm being dramatic, but like it, it, we get his attention when we pray. He's attracted by our prayers I'm a little emotional because I'm wondering, like, why don't I do this more often? Why don't I retreat to my private place and break myself before God and pray properly? Because this promise, this we talk about this being a year of freedom. And, and here's this promise of freedom based on the prayer of the saints. All those beautiful promises at the dedication of Solomon's temple. Do you know the word pray is used so many times in there? If my people will humble themselves and pray. It's, the word is the same word we've been talking about. This submissive entreating. Just getting before God and saying, Listen God, I, I'm totally dependent on you right now. I, I totally need you to pull through for me right here. I, I, I just can't do it on my own. This is the proper way to pray. It's not in using big words and repetitive words and religious terms. It's just really humbling the heart and praying. Jesus says in Mark 11 verse 24, he says, For this reason I tell you, Whatever you pray and ask for, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you your sins. This passage does a, a, a big number on a lot of Christians. First of all, the first half, the the prosperity preachers use that all the time. And he says, if you just ask and believe, you'll receive. And of course, they, they throw in that, you know, if you just sow a seed and you'll receive. And we get all caught up in this. And, and then some of us walk away from this promise because we're like, well, I'm not going to treat God like a genie. I'm not going to just treat him like if I ask him for this, he's going to give it to me. But the truth is, he does want to give us things. And he does want to hear us ask him. I mean, Jesus, the son of God, asked his father for things. He entreated the father to do things on his behalf. And so should we. We should ask God. And we should believe that we're going to receive it, as this passage says. But what a lot of people forget is that, that, that second part. Jesus says, listen, if you're praying and you have something against somebody, just forgive them. Give to them. Forgiving means to give. You give to someone. And in the same way, the Father will forgive us. Not just give us mercy and salvation, but give us what we're praying for. We need to ask God for more things. We do. We need to ask God specific things. We need to ask him for our freedom from habits and, and, and sicknesses. But we also need to ask him for, for, for souls, for neighbors, for family members. And, and I'm not saying that we haven't because we have. But we need to ask believing 
This is a year of freedom, not just for me as an individual, not just for you as an individual, but for us. And I believe that connected to this year of freedom is that this is a year of answered prayers. And so if this is the word of God, if it's not just something on my mind, but it's something that the Holy Spirit is putting on all of our hearts, then I encourage you to pray this week like you haven't prayed in decades. Pray like the psalmist describes in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Like Paul says, pray without ceasing. Listen, blind Saul, like when you read in Acts about Ananias, it says that God shows up and says, hey, Ananias, there's this guy Saul and he's praying at this specific street. Go and see him. I mean, there's blind Saul praying, not knowing what on earth has happened to him. And some guy, I, I, I don't even know the geography, tens or hundreds of kilometers away, gets told, hey, there's this dude praying. Go and, go and see him. Paul and Silas are in prison at night. Horrible, nasty prisons. And they're praying. And the doors open up. Jesus is on a cross, dying. And he prays. And he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And that very weekend, the Spirit of God does a miracle and raises a dead man. If we ask anything, anything in his name, he will do it. That's the promise of prayer. That's the beauty of prayer. That's the power of prayer. And so this morning, I'd like us to take communion as a prayer. I'd like us to take communion as a as an act of submissive request where we asking God that promise of Jeremiah, will you be attracted to us? Will you come and make yourself available to us and let this communion have its full effect on our lives? So now I invite you to grab your piece of bread. I have mine right here and we're going to partake as a prayer. This is a prayer this morning, a request that we would receive our freedom, that we would receive our sustenance to do this in the name of Jesus. I'm going to invite you to take your cup. Pastor Billy felt my glass was too big, so he got me these little, I think they're a shot glass but I have juice, I promise, inside. Take your cup. We've already said before, but we'll say again, this is the cup of a covenant. Covenant. Covenant speaks of marriage. Covenant speaks of intimacy. Covenant speaks of two coming together. Covenant speaks of the provisions coming to both parties. And so God takes care of all of our needs with this cup. So I encourage you now to partake in the name of Jesus. Well, I want to bless you. I mean that. I don't just mean it loosely. Like, I want to bless you. I want there to be a blessing to come on your life for not just having watched a video this morning, but hearing the word of God and responding to it. And so I pray a blessing on you. I pray that God would give you this week, this month, what you're asking him for. And above any material thing or any uh, worldly request that he can give us, I pray above all that he will make himself available to you and that you will experience that and you will know that our God lives. So say goodbye for now and I Look forward to hopefully seeing you all on Wednesday. And if not, we'll see you again next week. Bye for now.